So welcome to the Buckinghamshire County Museum. This is the Friars Aylesbury exhibition. And we're going to have a look around and just see uh, what's going on. Uh, this is the entrance. And uh, you'll see we've got some Friars t-shirts on sale over here. And the tour book, uh, sorry, the tour book, <laughs> the exhibition program. I'm so used to talking about tour books. But, um, yeah, some various bits and pieces. Uh, the exhibition's been running since March the 1st, and uh, uh, tomorrow is the last day. So, a few more things there. The Steve Hackett poster. And uh, just another gig in the sticks. So, come through. This is, uh, this is the uh, official uh, exhibition Don't poster. Don't rub that. Oh, sorry. This is the official uh, Friars uh, poster for the, for the exhibition. And here is a fantastic picture of The Clash uh, by Mark Jordan. Mark Jordan was an incredible find. Um, we didn't know him until uh, January of this year, and he got in touch with us and said, you know, would would be interested in seeing some of his photographs from Friars. And I said, of course, we always desperately need photographs. But what he came up with was just incredible, just absolutely amazing. Um, and this is one of the classic shots. This is the Clash at Friars in 1978. Um, Joe Strummer and Mick, fantastic. So, we're going through now into the exhibition. And here you see the entrance stairs, and uh, with a few tasty little bits on each step. <laughs> uh, and up here we have posters on the uh, left-hand side. Uh, that's the uh, Pretty Things, um, uh, the 2009 40th anniversary concert. And we've got Hawkwind, Stiff Little Fingers, that's the Clash at Stoke Mandeville Stadium. And on the left-hand side, we've got these amazing Mark Jordan photographs, Blondie there, um, John Otway, actually at the preview of the, um, of the exhibition. There's uh, Gary Newman, the selector, uh, the jam, Paul Weller, when he was much younger than he is now, uh, Steve Hillage, and that's uh, Paul Weller in 2010, which was the very last concert at the Civic Centre, uh, of the last thing ever to happen at the Civic Centre, in fact. Then we have the Pirates, Mick Green, the Pirates, just a legend, total legend, the inspiration for Wilco Johnson. Uh, we've got Mark Knopfler, who only played Friars once, uh, but supporting Talking Heads, uh, fabulous, fabulous show. Peter Gabriel, uh, looking a bit like um, he's in his night dress or something. Talking Heads, Clash again, and Sham 69. All amazing photographs, and we're so um, privileged to be able to display them all taken at Friars Aylesbury. And on the other side, you can see we've got the Mick Deville poster, uh, Motorhead, Talking Heads, supported by Dire Straits, uh, one of the classic Friars gigs, I mean, just extraordinary. Adam and the Ants further down the beat, The Damned. So, yes, this is the the beginning of the exhibition proper, if you like, although the stairs is certainly a great taster. Um, and here we have the blow-up of the Ramones playing in 1977, an absolutely classic shot by uh, Geoffrey Tyrrell, uh, which we blew up to about, well, as you can see, about 12 foot by 6 foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can see the Friars security down here in the front there with the Friars Aylesby shirts, that's the security. And uh, somebody's throwing a coat, and we're not quite sure why, but there seems to be another coat up here. So there's some sort of clothing exchange going on somehow. Um, and then here we have the, uh, just the evolution of Friars from 1969 to 2014. Uh, a brief um, summary of the exhibition, if you like. We've got over 93,000 members, supposedly the biggest music club in Europe, and uh, founded in 1969, and we're still promoting now. Uh, there are various sections of the exhibition. There's a fabulous Jamaican section. Um, and of course the phase four, the phase three, phase two, and phase one, the four venues that we used um, 
during that 45-year period. So we start off in roughly chronological order. Uh, this is um, a map of the four venues. Uh, the first one was phase one here is the new Friarage Hall, which is uh, off Walton Street, you can see there. Phase two was the Borough Assembly Hall, that's um, just off the Market Square. Uh, phase three was the Civic Centre, just a little bit uh, below that there on the map. And the fourth, the one we're using at the moment, the Waterside Theatre, which is phase four. So that's the, that's the four venues in the town that we've used. Uh, there's um, a picture here of phase two. That's a fabulous photograph of the Borough Assembly Hall, empty actually, uh, for the Andy Fair with a low gig. That was actually the last gig ever to happen at Borough Assembly Hall for Friars. And below it you can see the queue, um, a Ford Zodiac, we think that is, you know, of the time, around about 1971. Uh, and uh, what else have we got? We've got uh, the first poster here from phase three and uh, the civic queue outside the civic centre. I think that was for uh, Paul Weller. Yes, Paul Weller, when we put tickets on sale for Paul Weller in 2010. Uh, this is the front page of the Bucks Advertiser, which uh, came out the week after we decided to stop Friars in 1984, and we went dark for 25 years. We, uh, we came back in 2009, so there's a little bit of an interval there. And here we have phase four, the Waterside Theatre. That's the queue for the specials um, in uh, February 2013. Uh, here we have the very first ever Friars gig, uh, Monday the 2nd of June, Mike Cooper and Mandrake Paddle Steamer. And here we have the phase one venue. But what was, I actually took this picture the day before it was demolished, and I didn't know it was the day before it was demolished, but uh, I just happened to go down there to take a picture of it. And uh, the demolition crew said I couldn't, and I begged them to, to let me. Uh, and they said, tomorrow it won't be here. And down here we've got the very first advert for the first gig on the 2nd of June 1969 with Mike Cooper and Mandrake Paddle Steamer. Uh, that was the very first night in 1969. What else can we show you up here? We have the very first gig of Phase 2 with the Groundhogs, Saturday, April 17th, 1971. And the very first poster for the Phase 3 at the Civic Centre, that was September the 13th, 1975. Um, interestingly, um, John Otway supported on both of these gigs. He wasn't actually shown on that one for some reason, but he did, um, he did play on that show and he did play on this one as well. This is the very first gig of the Waterside Phase 4 uh, in 2010. And this down here, of course, is when we came back 25 years later at the Civic Centre, the 40th anniversary with the Pretty Things, Edgar Broughton Band and the Groundhogs. So, over here we have the poster for the Ramones gig that we saw as we came in. Uh, the Ramones supported by Talking Heads. Fabulous, fabulous bill. Uh, what people would pay for that now. And this is an ad for their tour. You can see Friars Aylesbury there on the 30th of December. That's the tour after this one, actually. Um, and down here we have uh, a fantastic picture from uh, 1977. Again, 30th of December 1977, the second time they played. And we have a contract here for the Ramones and Talking Heads. Combined, they cost £500 uh, from NEMS agency. And here's the ticket here, too. Ramones plus Talking Heads. Um, yes, this is a selection of tickets on both of these panels um, over the years, mostly from Phase 3. Uh, we used to have this funny little Father Christmas figure here uh, for the Christmas shows. I don't know where it came from, but we always seem to use it. There's another one down here for Madness, I see. Um, and another one here for the Ramones with a funny old Father Christmas on it. Uh, but we have Focus, Talk Talk, I can see Toya, Thomas Dalby, Kick Creole with Coconuts, goes on and on. Moving on from this area which is just sort of a summary of the four venues and the significant first gigs, here we have a typical uh, prize poster of Captain Beefheart and his magic band. Uh, an absolutely classic night altogether. And here we have some of 
a small display about the designers of the posters. There's uh, Budget, um, who I was married to at the time, who designed a lot of the, or nearly all the, the uh, posters in phase three from about 1975 to 84. And that's the legendary Ben Bennett, who uh, designed the earlier posters, absolutely amazing designs. We've been trying to get hold of Ben, but we haven't been able to find him um, because he would love to have seen this exhibition with all his designs in them. Uh, other significant people in the history of Friars was Chris Needs here, who's in the Friars dressing room with Mott the Hoople, and um, Pete Frame over here. If you can uh, zoom in on him. He, uh, a very important character in the uh, history of Friars, very influential in how we operated, particularly in the early years. Um, so now we're coming on to phase one and these classic uh, phase one posters. But this is The Pretty Things, 1969 and Free. Uh, Andy Dunkley was the DJ at the time and the psychedelic light show was Optic Nerve, which is Brian Goff and Mike who uh, used to do the, we'll see their projectors in a minute. Um, up at the top here we've got Blobwin, Pignig, Broughton, you know, classic Friars designs done by Impact in Windsor in those days. That one there is probably my favourite post of all time, Mighty Baby in Principal Edwards Magic Theatre. Just an absolute classic. Um, this is Blossom Toes, that was very early on again, the summer of uh, 1969, and in those days I was living in Princess Risborough, and that was my phone number, Risborough 3549. Uh, not quite the same as that now. Here's an example of a very early membership card. This is actually Ray Smith's card from the very first night at Friars, 2nd of June 1969. And this is a, a, about Chris Nee's designing this motif, which was on all the uh, Friars membership cards. And some of the early Friars news sheets. Uh, these were actually printed at the County Council, the Bucks County Council, although they, I'm not sure they were aware of it, but um, uh, they very kindly donated their printing services to us and we're very, very grateful. To this day, we're very, very grateful. Um, moving over here then, we have this extraordinary uh, um, uh, Edgar Broughton um, display which um, shows these first two albums. Yeah, they were vegetarian and this is um, <laughs> the classic um, album cover, the Edgar Broughton band, um, which shows meat. And this is Wazza Wazza, their first album. And this guitar is Edgar Broughton's 1962 Stratocaster, which he used at Friars in 1969. You can see in the background um, him using that, uh, that guitar. It's actually been repainted since the original um, design on it, but it is the same guitar. And these are later pictures. Uh, when they played at the Civic Centre in, I think, 1980. Um, and here we have Quintessence playing Phase 1, uh, Shiva there playing Phase 1 in 1969, uh, with John Peel uh, sort of compared the whole thing. King Crimson here again, this is the classic King Crimson album. Uh, King Crimson were the only band to ever sell out Phase 1, believe it or not, um, but that was in July 1969. East of Eden, again, were a, a regular band that uh, were very popular at the time. And um, now we're moving, uh, well, this is still Phase 1, actually. These are all the dates in Phase 1. This is a little summary of Phase 1, this, uh, this display. And below here we have the Edgar Broughton band at Phase 1. You can see that Steve Broughton there. Um, it's, you don't, can't see Edgar because it's taken from behind the band. But, uh, that's, and this is the base of Arthur Grant, but that's about as near as you can get to it. But it is one of the very rare photographs from Phase One. It was a magical time. Here we have the projectors from Optic Nerve. Um, the actual projectors they used uh, at the time, which it gave a sort of blobby psychedelic effect to the whole thing. Um, and. Uh, Yes, we've attempted to recreate it up there, not exactly as it was, I'm proud to say, but it's, the thought was there and the principle is there, where it was just blobs of chemical. I don't think it would be allowed now for health and safety reasons. Um, and here we have the Genesis contract, the first time we've got Genesis at phase one in 1970, where we paid them £10. Um, and this is what they looked like in those days. Phil Collins hadn't been the band at that point. Uh, and so we were involved with Genesis right from the early days. This is the Optic Nerve guys, you know, um, uh, Brian and Mike. 
and actually this guy Nick was originally with optic nerve here. Um, this is rare bird and heavy jelly. We discovered this quite recently, this poster. A classic Ben Bennett design again. You know, he had his distinctive designs on all the posters. And this is Black Sabbath. We played February 1970, just, I think, the same week that their first album came out. Uh, and then, again, we paid them just £25. So here's some of the posters that we used to sell. We used to have a little shop called United Frog. Um, here is a picture, actually, of myself when I had hair, and Terry Harms, uh, Ava Roach, and John Fowler, who were the sort of little team that we had in those days who presented Friars. Here's a, a, a list of some of the stuff we used to sell. Uh, Rolling Stone, all sorts of stuff like that. This classic uh, poster of Che Guevara, which used to sell Jimi Hendrix. Smoky Rice, who are a Princess Risborough band that I used to manage. Um, and Bill Stallwood here is still playing blues in the area. That's Mick Barnard, he went on to play with Genesis. Tig Harrison, of course, went on to play with Blondie. So a little Risbrick band there that did big things. <laughs> Amazing. And this flock um, poster here, we sold so many of it. I think it was 12 shillings and sixpence, but people bought it, put it above their uh, mantelpieces and um, would sort of jump up and down and see if it moved. I don't know what they did, but it was something, something crazy. Uh, that was the very first Mop the Hoople gig in December 1969. Classic Ben Bennett poster again. Um, just extraordinary design. Now we move on to phase two. This, um, we were closed down in 1970, phase one, uh, and when I, I was looking for a venue for nine months to start again in Aylesbury. In the meantime, we did lots of gigs in Watford and Bedford and High Wycombe. Um, and eventually we decided to come to the Borough Assembly Hall, which had been there all the time, but hadn't had a great reputation for, for gigs. And we came back in 1971 with the Groundhogs, uh, April 71, and we went right through to 1975. Uh, the, it was, many people think of this as the absolute golden era of Friars Aylesbury. It was an uh, extraordinary time. 71, we had uh, bands like Fleetwood Mac, we had Genesis back, we had Al Cooper, uh, but the most extraordinary and incredible gig was September 1971 with David Bowie. It was the first time he'd ever, <coughs> excuse me, it was the first time he had ever uh, played Hunky Dory and uh, we didn't realise at the time just what a significant gig it was, but it was a very, very important gig for us. And then he played again in January 72 and again in July 1972. So if we walk over to the corner here, we can see um, this is a, a, what we call the David Bowie corner. Uh, the Velvet Underground played Friars in 1971. And you can see uh, Roxy Music, that was 72. The MC5, I think, was 72. Lou Reed, July 1972. And Fleetwood Mac, that was in 1971. But this Bowie gig here was the classic uh, uh, Ziggy Stardust gig. When he came back in January, he played Ziggy Stardust for the first time ever. Uh, so it was a world premiere of the Ziggy Stardust album. And as the September gig had been the world premiere of Hunky Dory. Uh, but by the time we came back in July 72, it was the fully developed Ziggy Stardust show. And this is an absolutely amazing photograph by Mick Rock of him just after he'd thrown his, sh he'd thrown his shirt out to the audience. And fans ripped it up. And this is actually a part of the shirt that... Um, that uh, uh, was, was, uh, was, um, was taken by a fan, uh, and it's just uh, an amazing, amazing thing to have in the exhibition. This is another classic picture of Mick, uh, Mick Ronson and um, David Bowie in a rather classic pose. This is Mott the Hoople, who played uh, the Borough Assembly of Friars in uh, 19, I think this is a 1973 shot, Ian Hunter. Again, it was an amazing time for Mott the Hoople and they were very attached to Aylesbury, uh, so very much a part of the story. This is actually the flyer from David Bowie in 1971. This is what he looked like at the time. It was the man who sold the world look. Um, and then he saw this was the Hunky Dory album, which actually came out several months after he played in September 71. And the Ziggy Stardust album, of course. 
this was the January 72 flyer, uh, which dealt with, uh, that was the Ziggy Stardust premiere. This photograph over here is, the, is him at uh, Friars Aylesbury on the 15th of July 1972. And here we have the contract, £250 uh, for that gig, uh, signed by Nicky Graham, who's actually the keyboard player, so we're not quite sure what that was all about. Uh, but for that gig, um, RCA Records flew in 50 journalists uh, from America. Uh, and after that point, Fries was sort of internationally well known uh, because of that, because they all went back to America and wrote reviews of it. This is actually the text that Bowie sent us on the opening night of the exhibition in uh, March, uh, actually February the 28th, uh, 2014. Uh, we were absolutely thrilled to receive that and very grateful to Mark Adams, who is um, Bowie's webmaster for organising that. It was very, very good. That's another picture of him uh, from that, uh, from that J uh, July 15th show. OK. Uh, over here we have uh, Cockney Rebel. They came along in 1974. We put them on four times. And as uh, Steve Hardy says up here, all were amazing, all sold out, all buzzing, unforgettable. Uh, wonderful, wonderful shows, and we were really very, very much associated with Cockney Rebel. And as a result, we got this feature in Melody Maker, the Star Club, again, it really put us on the map. Um, here, we have Pink Floyd's Wave Drum Kit. I don't know if you can see above it, at the kit, uh, Richard, but it's... Um, uh, this is the kit that we have on display above us here, and it's got the wave, um, you can see the wave there on the bass drum, that's the wave up here at the top. And uh, we've been in touch with um, Katie Hepburn, who actually painted it, and uh, she's explained here her inspiration for Japanese art and how she painted the kit. Um, it's actually the same kit that was used at fr the Friars um, Pink Floyd Dunstable gig in November 1979 and we have a photograph of that uh, in the foreign gig section. So it was originally a silver pearl kit and she painted it with this Japanese wave uh, design which is classic uh, Japanese art uh, which is great, great for us and uh, she's actually coming to the exhibition tomorrow so it would be nice to see her there. So then let's move into the foreign section. We, um, we were putting gigs on in other towns as well as Aylesbury. And in 1970, we put on uh, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, for example. That's just after Fires Aylesbury failed. Phase one was closed. Um, and we put on the Straubs. We put on various other people in Watford. Uh, the Faces in 1971, the only time we ever put the Faces on. King Crimson, that was an amazing show. Incredible string band, one of the classic hippie bands. 1972, Family, Elton John and Linda Lewis. We'll have a little look at the Elton John pictures in a second. The Kinks, one of the best gigs ever. The, the Genesis Convention, that was put on as we thought they were going to split up. And we put it on as a sort of big celebration of Genesis and their music. Hopefully that helped them in their career. And in Bedford, we've got the usual bands, Mott the Hoople, similar to what the Aylesbury gigs being Genesis, etc. Then we had the Dunstable gigs, we had Pink Floyd, that was the most classic gig of all there, 26th of November 1969, and uh, that made so much money actually, it subsidised Friars Aylesbury Phase 1 for about a year, which was wonderful. 72 we did put Bowie on at Dunstable, and uh, in the Ziggy Stardust phase again, New Reed again we put on, and right the way through 73 and 74, um, people like Love, for example, we put on, which is an absolutely amazing, amazing gig. This is High Wickham, 1970, we put on Procol Harum, Howard Jones. Later, this was much later, this was 83, but a few gigs in Wickham. We did a classic gig in Princess Ridgeburg in 1970, only one, and then the council told us we could definitely not do any more. Nobody liked us. Uh, but this was Genesis just about two days after Phil Collins had joined the band. And speaking to Mike Rutherford, he actually remembers that uh, very, very clearly. Um, then a few very far-flung gigs, Liverpool, Birmingham, Preston, Newcastle. This was an Atomic Rooster tour that we did. But we soon discovered that really we belonged in Aylesbury and 
the national approach wasn't working for us. So um, this is uh, down here we have the kinks at Watford, um, and just a stunning gig, a very rare appearance by the kinks. And here we have the uh, amazing picture of uh, Elton John jumping off his piano at Watford uh, in February 1972. It was at the time of the um, uh, miners strike and you can see it says at the bottom of the ad here generator on site to counteract power cut. There was actually a bomb scare during this show and I had to go up on stage and stop Elton playing and a policeman followed me up there and actually sat at uh, the piano, at Elton's piano, and announced to everybody they should leave the building in an orderly fashion. But uh, that made the melody maker, which is quite funny. Um, so then we have, this is the poster for that gig, that Elton John gig, getting the contract, we paid him a thousand pounds. And in those days, that was an extraordinary amount of money. You know, I mean, we, we must have held our breath on that one. But it was an amazing, amazing show. And then moving around here, I don't know if you can follow us around. This is actually the Pink Floyd gig in 1969. And you can see the, the silver pearl kit. Uh, that's the same kit we have on display here, but before it was repainted. And this is the Civic Centre, uh, the Civic Centre, Friars Dunstable, Civic, Queensway Hall, it was called the Civic Centre in Dunstable. No longer there, it's been demolished. Um, but you can see Roger Waters here and uh, Dave Mason. Uh, this is the poster, the Pink Floyd poster, again, a, uh, a Ben Bennett classic where he hand painted the sun on every poster. So we silk screened the basic poster and then he would hand paint <laughs> a green sun uh, on each one. But that's the sort of thing we used to do in those days. Uh, here we have. Um, this is a picture of me actually paying the band in the dressing room. You've got Nick Mason there, you know, uh, Roger Waters again there, and myself, would you believe, uh, paying the band. This is Bowie at the Civic, Centre, uh, Civic Hall in Dunstable, again, the Queensway Hall. Again, it looks like we paid him £400 on that occasion. And here we have Jeff Beck, who we also put on at Dunstable. Beck, Bogart and Appice, as they were then. Lou Reed, again, uh, Paid Lou Reed £400. Uh, this is Genesis at Dunstable, that's uh, Peter Gabriel and his wife at the time. Uh, and moving on, what else do we have? Love. There's a classic poster up here of Love, one of the legendary American bands, and it was a very proud moment when we put them on. Uh, seeing here, we paid them £350, a bargain. And then here's some of the Friars Bedford posters, um, not the Hoople. Matthew's Southern Comfort, a wonderful gig that was. Chicken Shack, I remember they did eight encores. Um, again, Genesis at Bedford, a classic Ben Bennett poster design. And uh, Man and Sunshine and Genesis at the Bedford Corn Exchange, which is a different, um, a different venue. And here we have a few of the foreign gigs. We have Nottingham, uh, Preston, incredible string band. Um, Howard Jones at High Wycombe, Mott Hoople at High Wycombe and Purple Harem at Highwickham. This is the actual British Legion Hall in Princess Risborough, this classic uh, Risborough gig. And uh, this is the county offices. Uh, <laughs> somebody, I don't know, is this some sort of cartoon thing at the top and bottom of the county offices? But as I said, we, <coughs> we had our, our, our uh, uh, handouts printed there. This is actually the poster for that gig, the, the Princess Risborough gig, another Ben Bennett design, wonderful design. And in the middle here we have some little bits and pieces. We have some of the Friars t-shirts. That's the headband that I used to wear and I actually wore it in that photograph. It's the same headband, would you believe, um, that I used to wear. Yes, I know it's difficult to believe now that I had hair, but I did. Uh, this is the till, from the Friars till, and uh, the accounts books. And here we have um, Sue Wyatt, as she was then, uh, actually taking the money at Friars Phase 2, and her mum and dad, Bob and Peggy, who actually stood in to take the money on one or two occasions, um, which is a wonderful picture to have. These are the Friars stamps that we used to stamp people with and stamp the tickets with, and this is the, the little tickets that we used to give as people came in as well. Here we have some of the Friars membership memorabilia, different coloured membership cards over the, over the years. 
we have the very first, we had a book here with everybody's name and address in it, uh, members. Keith Martin was the first member ever to walk through the door on June the 2nd, 1969. And he's still very much around and came to the exhibition a couple of times. These are the backstage passes uh, and various uh, uh, forms of art. We used to have these round badges in the old days, different colours for different gigs. These are a few more Watford uh, photographs. Again, uh, the Kinks, wonderful, wonderful show. Um, it was made the 9th, 1972. Uh, and it was just one of those magic things. They, they did very few gigs, and uh, this was one of them with Dave Davis doing Death of a Clown, and it was just wonderful. I think we paid them £600 there. Um, here we have a few uh, clothing items that are uh, from the period, and here is the King Crimson gig we did, which was absolutely packed. <coughs> In fact, there were so many. Uh, I don't know why, but people either got in free around the back or something, but there was a limited number of seats in the Watford Town Hall, and there were too many people in the building, but the manager decided to let it happen because there would have been a riot if he hadn't. Uh, and it was just a magical time. That's Robert Fripp. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful show. This is Soft Machine, again, before Robert White had his accident. Um, another sensational uh, show at Watford. And uh, up here we have the classic Ben Bennett Emerson Lake and Farmer poster. This was uh, in 1970, it's the first one we ever did at Watford, um, and one of the very first Emerson Lake and Farmer gigs. I think it was the second ever gig they ever played. Uh, and he put this <laughs> extraordinary uh, ape picture on every, every poster. It was an absolutely wonderful gig. I remember it very, very clearly. And again, it looks like we paid them £550. That's Watford Town Hall itself. And this is a picture here of Malcolm Isbister, who co-promoted Watford with me, all the Watford shows, and Dunstable shows, actually, um, after 1970. So coming back into the exhibition, this is the second half of Phase 2 on this, uh, this um, uh, display here. This is Steve Harley down here playing live at uh, the Bar Assembly Hall Phase 2. And uh, this is a summary of the gigs that we did between 1971 and 1975. The very last gig was Saturday, August the 30th, uh, which was Andy Fair with the Lone Starry Eyed and Laughing. Uh, many people re regard Phase 2 as the golden era of Friars. You know, the hall was pretty echoey and uh, acoustics weren't great, but we had some sensational nights there. Obviously, the Bowie ones standing up probably more than any of the others. One of the nights was Queen here. Unfortunately, we haven't got the Queen poster. Nobody's got it. Um, but this is the queue coming out of the, the Borough Assembly Hall. You know, wait, people waiting to get in. Um, that Queen night was, we only put them on once, but it was an extraordinary, extraordinary gig. And if anybody has got the Queen poster, we'd love to talk to them about acquiring it. So, <coughs> now we move on to... Um, well, this is just a, a few more, actually, of phase two we should talk about. Can there, uh, Genesis and Jude, that's March the 11th. Uh, uh, again, it would probably be about 72, I think. Um, this is Genesis, again, the love and fear of the Vale of Aylesbury, September the 2nd, again, 1972, I think, or it could have been 71. Um, here, Peter Gabriel asked uh, the Genesis gig at phase two to uh, boo. Uh, he said, look, we're going to judge, at the beginning of the set, he said, we're going to judge how much you appreciate our music by how much you boo. So after every song, there was this massive sh booing took place. And I, I remember there was a chap who came in late and came up to me and said, what on earth's going on? They're playing brilliantly. Why is everybody booing? And I said, oh, well, it's just the way it goes, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, so this is Peter Gabriel again. Some great pictures of Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins there. Um, and then this is phase three, actually, um, at the Civic Centre, but this is a picture of me presenting Phil, Mike and Tony with the Friars Cup. Um, they'd already presented me with this cup here that you can see actually in the cabinet. It was the, uh, the uh, Genesis Cup for talent spotting, which they gave to me pro prior to me giving them their cup. And this is uh, Mike Rutherford's double neck guitar. Um, it's actually a different one to the one he's holding in the photograph, but he explains here how he had it built. He went to a guitar maker and told him to cut a reckon in half 
and glue these two guitars together, much to the uh, guitar maker's... Um, uh, he, he was in shock when he saw the guitars in half, I think. But uh, a wonderful photograph and a great band, and we were very lucky to be associated with them. This is actually in 1980 when um, they came back. They were already a stadium band at this time, but um, they came back to play for us, which was a fantastic thing. The queue for this concert lasted three days. It was in the cattle market in Aylesbury, and it turned into a festival in its own right. Um, you know, we had a, a porridge in wheelbarrows, we had music, we had a cricket match, we had a football match, we had all sorts of things in the queue. In fact, some people to this day say they enjoyed the queue more than the gig, but so we won't go there. Here we have Stackridge, little Stackridge display. Stackridge were one of the bands that were very popular at Friars, set in phase two and phase three, and um, also Capability Brown here, who were a fantastic six-part harmony band and played Friars. They were big in Aylesbury, not so big anywhere else. And quite a few bands like Stackridge, Capability Brown, Andy Fair of the Low comes to mind, were big in Aylesbury, but not so big in the rest of the country. Uh, this is actually their album, Voice. Fantastic album, fantastic album design. So, uh, Dr. Feelgood, they played Phase 2 and Phase 3. Uh, and we put them on oh, about five or six times. This is Wilco Johnson, uh, Lee Brillo, just the most amazing band. And they sort of bridged the old wave, the old hippie wave. You see Wilco's wearing bell bottoms here. Um, and the sort of punk era. They were the only band that really bridged the old wave and the new wave, if you like. So then, this is the phase three um, era. Um, started in 1975 with Greenslade and went right through to 1984. This is the first part of it. Um, here below you have the clash, you know, halfway through this process with the Stranglers here. This is really when punk came in with the Stranglers. There we are there the end of 76. After that, it was quite punk influence. And it was a bit of a mishmash here between punk and the old wave. And occasionally you'd get things like Kate and Anna McGarrigal, then you'd have the Ramones, uh, then you'd have Split Ends, and uh, you know, all sorts of, uh, a sort of mixture of the transition between the old wave and the new wave. Uh, and here, up here we have Sailor, that's playing, I think, uh, I'm not quite sure when that was, but we can look it up. Um, we've got the Clash here, that classic Clash poster designed by Budget Stops. Uh, Blondie and XTC, Police and the Cramps, The Jam. And an extraordinary photograph um, that Mark Jordan has produced. Joe Strummer here of uh, The Clash in 1980. And Blondie uh, in 1977. Just a phenomenal photograph. And Ian Hunter here in 1977. That's just the most wonderful photograph. Uh, very, 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 very special indeed. And um, what do we have here? This is the Howard Jones corner. Uh, I've managed Howard from the early days, 1982 through to the present day. Um, this is a, a, a million selling um, a silver disc that we got, platinum disc, should I say, in America. Uh, he played several times at Friars, started off in the Walton Lounge and then went to the Aston Hall in the building and then of course the main hall. And this is his 1982 keyboard rig. Um, you can see Howard playing the Moog synthesizer at the back here. Um, he actually strapped one of these on round his neck and would trail a mains lead and audio leads, something that would never happen these days. And that's the boiler suit that he used to wear um, as pictured in this picture at the back. So, where are we now? <laughs> well, this is the Toya um, display, which is Toya's very kindly lent us this outfit, one of her outfits from the late 80s. Um, that's the Toya poster for November the 23rd. Um, she's been very, very kind to let us have all that. Just a fabulous display uh, of the Toya. Toya's 1980, um, gosh, the date, we'll have to look up the date. This is the second uh, phase of phase three from 1978 through to 84. And you can see there's literally hundreds of gigs there. Um, extraordinary gigs. Bowie did actually come back in 1977 with Iggy Pop. And it was the only time that the hall was unsymmetrical and that everybody was over to the side that Bowie was playing. 
he came back as a keyboard player with Iggy Pop. Uh, and that's um, the Buzzcocks, wonderful photograph of the Buzzcocks playing bass three. Ian Jury and the Blockheads, another huge band for us. And uh, here we have two p wonderful things we found in the archives. This is um, uh, a set list for Madness, which they'd written on the back of a paper plate. You know, the, so the set list for the songs they were going to do, coming out to um, My Girl, you can see there. This is Ian Jury and the Blockheads set list, again, on a piece of paper, sort of, not on the lines, but the other way around. And this was actually guesting with uh, Mick Jones from The Clash, Topper from The Clash, you can see there, and Paul. So they were actually guesting with, with uh, members of The Clash. Uh, and here we have the U2's Vox AC30, this is Bono here, and the, this is McGee, U2 and Altered Images, which was actually the uh, 12th birthday party of, of Friars. And this is the actual AC30 that The Edge used um, in, on the 6th of June 1981. Here's a picture of me with Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins when they did the 1980 show. Oh, it may have been actually Phil Collins' gig in 1979. I think it was, actually. That's the Iggy Pop poster. You can see Susie and the Banshees, the Kinks. This is more that Genesis 1980 show. And that's the 1980 poster for Genesis when they came back, when they were massive and we were, our venue was far too small for them. Um, here we have the second coming of Phase 3, 2009-2010, just a handful of gigs. But it's all down to Mike O'Connor, basically, who started the, the uh, Friars Asbury website and reignited interest in Friars Asbury. So we did a few more gigs, and they were all absolute, absolutely fabulous, ending up with Paul Weller in 2010. After that, the venue was demolished. And down here you can see a picture of Paul Weller playing that last gig. And over here we have the, the poster. And we got John Otway to support him. Uh, and he, John's always been a, uh, so involved with Friars. I think he's played 17 times um, over the years. Just an extraordinary achievement. So uh, we're coming now into the other main room. And uh, this is a lovely little display of the Aylesbury Goes Flaccid album with the market square clock sort of a little bit flexible there. Um, and this is the Disco Students single, I Met My Girlfriend at a Friars gig, and Fire at Earth Records on the B-side. This is actually a piece of carpet from the Civic Centre before it was knocked down. And it just shows you at this time there was a lot of interest in local talent. And uh, Aylesbury had a sort of mini Liverpool sort of vibe about it. Um, lots of bands coming through. Lord Coxhill was part of that, uh, John Otway was part of that obviously. The Vice Creams with Chris Needs. Um, Wild Willie Barrett, uh, lots of bands sort of emerging at that time. Here we have uh, Peter Walvis's bass that he played at Friars in the Phase 3 period, uh, his Rickenbacker, which is kindly let us display. Uh, Pete uh, came, played in all sorts of bands before he played for Meridian at Friars. And here we have one of the most special displays, I think, in the whole exhibition, which is the Lowell Coxhill display. Um, <coughs> we have, um, that's when he supported Bowie, and that was that September 71 Bowie gig. The very first time he played was actually the second or third week we, we ran with Free, he supported Free. But Lowell is one of the great uh, legends of Aylesbury. Um, unfortunately, he passed away in 2012, but um, we're very much hoping there'll be some sort of town uh, a dedication to him. I, I, we think a, a statue would be very nice in Kingsbury Square, but whether that will ever happen, we'll have to wait and see. But Lowell's um, widow has allowed us to show three of his horns there, um, his famous um, soprano sax, which he was particularly well known for, for his freeform uh, jazz playing. And we have an obituary here by Chris Needs, wonderfully written obituary by Chris Needs on lol. Um, so then we're going through here. This is more of a local band section. Um, as we said, there was a lot of local bands that came through. Kajigugu came through from Leighton Buzzard. Um, Kilburn and the High Roads were actually based in Wingrave, uh, but were never really considered local for some reason. But Ian Jury obviously was in Kilburn and the High Roads. Um, Smoky Rice, the band from Risborough that we talked about before. Uh, and Otway, of course. Howard Jones, of course, from High Wycombe. 
and uh, Lowell Coxhill, etc., etc. But this is a picture of John. He played um, the Market Square in 1978 to 20,000 people. I don't think the Market Square has ever seen 20,000 people before that or since. Um, it was just an extraordinary afternoon. Um, this was a celebration of local bands. You know, we had a band called Ardazel, Hive Wagerfield, um, Otway, PTO, a band called PTO. Um, this is Ian Gillen. He actually lived in Aston Abbots. <laughs> and um, we have some wonderful photographs, again, by Mark Jordan uh, of, all these, of all these shows. This was the Aylesbury Rock Explosion, which we had a night just of local bands. And uh, you can see Pete Frames here and uh, Magenta Divine. Uh, Chris France, who was very involved with the local music scene. Uh, and Ardazel down here. Uh, just a fabulous celebration of Aylesbury local talent. And this is the <coughs> poster for the Otway gig in the Market Square, which was filmed by ITV, ATV, sorry, television, and was featured heavily in his film Otway the Movie. Uh, that's Warren Harry and the Yum Yum Band, again, another local band, Paul Kendall and Warren Harry. And this was me with an extraordinarily long arm. I don't know quite why it looks so long, but <laughs> announcing somebody rather. So then we come over here to the, uh, this is some great pictures of Otway again, and that was the uh, Rock Explosion poster. Uh, this is Otway's little display. This is a load of um, microphones that he's smashed up after doing headbutts in his set, and he just had a collection of what was left of these microphones, and what seems to be left of a Gibson guitar there, that's all that was left. <laughs> uh, this is the cut we gave him in 1978, which doesn't look like it's ever been polished. Um, but a wonderful celebration of John, who's such an important part of the Aylesbury scene. Again, pictures here of that uh, 20,000 people in the Market Square. Also Chris Needs in the, with the Vice Creams um, playing that day. And then Marillion. Marillion, other, the other great band to come from Aylesbury. This was um, uh, back in the day in uh, Phase 3. This is the gig we put on in uh, November 2013. Uh, was totally sold out at the waterside, the phase four, um, an absolutely sensational night at every level. And here we have the classic display of um, Jeff Tyrrell photographs from back in the day, and Sailor here. We have uh, Tangerine Dream, I think there, Captain Beefheart, Jonathan Kelly, Andy Ferrer the Low, Ronnie Lane Slim Chunks, Frupp, uh, Jack the Lad, uh, Commander Cody, Procol Harum, and another one here, Procol Harum, but Jeff took some sensational photographs, uh, and we're extremely grateful for him to be able to display them. Um, in future, perhaps we can just go in here, Richard. This is some more um, wonderful photographs by Mark Jordan, just extraordinary photographs of the Ramones. That's Johnny Ramone. We have Johnny Ramone here, just the most classic Johnny Ramone shot you're ever going to see in your life. Uh, when he produced this, I just couldn't, I just, I, my jaw dropped, I just could not believe it. But these are all at Friars Aylesbury. Um, this is uh, Susie Sue from Susie and the Banshees. And this picture here, the clash at Friars Aylesbury, just the most extraordinarily good photograph. Uh, and you can see Dave Williams there, who's doing security for us, and somebody else here, I'm not quite sure who that is, but uh, was just so grateful to have these photographs. And then here you have like uh, Mick DeVille, you've got um, The Knack and Iggy Pop, absolutely fabulous. The Ruby News, David Byrne of the Talking Heads up here, um, the Ramones again, and The Cramps, uh, supporting the police. Just a wonderful band, The Cramps. So we're extremely grateful to Mark. Uh, so now we're on to phase four, uh, one step beyond. <laughs> 2010, we put on the Buscocks. 2011, we put on Hawkwind and Wilco Johnson. Uh, then 2013, last year, we put the specials on, and that was uh, the first sellout we ever had at the Waterside, followed by Steve Hackett. Then we did Otway the movie in the smaller room, and then Marillion in November 2013, which again, the second sellout show, 1,700 people. Here we have, down here, we have the specials. Uh, that was the first one with the Buscocks. That was actually the very first show that was ever at the Waterside. 
um, and Hawkwind uh, in uh, 2011. Special was 2013. Uh, the queue um, was just extraordinary for that. All the tickets sold out in a day. Uh, it was, it was a, just a very special gig. Steve Hackett, uh, that was a great, great show on Thursday the 9th of May, just a week after the special show. And we had the front, after the specials, we had the front page of the Bucks Herald. Uh, and you can get sort of some sense of the show from that front page. And here, I don't know, if, Richard, if you can go back a little bit, but um, this is a blow-up of the specials on stage at Friars Aylesbury in 2013. and gives you some idea of, uh, of how it looked. Over here, we have something I'm very proud of. It's the Jamaican influence, we call this. Um, the character that was very involved with this was Pete Don, who now uh, runs Rough Trade Records in London, the retail side of Rough Trade Records. Um, he's doing very well, just opened up in New York. Um, but he encouraged us to put on some of the classic Jamaican bands, Toots and the Maytals, just uh, sensational. And Gregory Isaacs was probably one of the most special gigs of all time, in the Gregory Isaacs poster here, uh, in as much as most of the audience were black. And it's the only show we ever did where the majority of the people in the venue were black. And it was um, a very, very special gig. I was very, very proud of it uh, indeed. Here we have Dennis Brown. He played twice. He was fabulous, just fabulous. And I don't know if you can zoom in here, Richard, but that is Pete Don in Rough Trade Records. We've done a little piece there about his influence on Friars and the reggae um, music that he loved. This was actually the first reggae band we ever got on Steel Pulse from uh, Hansworth in Birmingham. Um, and that was really set the, set the tone because that was so, such a great gig. We, we did all these others after that. Haswad was one of the last ones we did. But again, and this is... Um, ah, now this is Rudy Thomas. He supported Dennis Brown, uh, again from Jamaica. Just fabulous. I mean, I wish I could go back in time and see those gigs again. Here we have Eddie and the Hot Rods, great photograph of Eddie and the Hot Rods playing phase three, and uh, Steve Hackett in 1978, great picture of him. How, where, how, how Mark got these wonderful pictures, I still don't know. And perhaps we can move here, we're just into the last section now. This is a, a, a beautiful, um, a comp, you know, sort of compilation, if you like, Mark J uh, Jordan compilation, the advert, Secret Affair, the Jam, Marillion again. Uh, Brand X, all sorts of uh, band. This band, Asylum, they were an extraordinary band. The, the singer came on in a three-piece suit, dressed as a city gent. This was the very. This was Otway the movie that was on last year, and this is the Marillion show in 2013, which was just extraordinarily good. This photograph here again this is Brand X. This is. Um, I don't know if you can see this. this is Brand X, Phil Collins again, a fantastic photograph of Phil Collins in Brand X 1975, which was this sort of jazz fusion band that he played for on the side when, uh, when Genesis weren't working. Um, here we have a little cinema area, and uh, we haven't got the sound on at the moment, or she probably wouldn't hear me, but this is a fantastic movie that Richard uh, Carr put together, and um, features lots of people talking about friars, uh, and it's just an extraordinary piece of work. It's a wonderful record of people's memories um, of what happened at Friars. And uh, hopefully will be available in some form or other at some point. Again, we've got more photographs here. Lovely pictures of Stackridge, Procol Harum here, um, Wilco Johnson, and uh, Howard Jones over there. So that's, um, that's, this is the cinema section. And over here, in this little area here, we've got more Mark Jordan photographs and a special cabinet of Mark's uh, memorabilia that he's put together entirely himself, this cabinet, with the camera that he used to hide down the, his wife fronts. He used to have it right in the middle in his wife fronts. So when people frisked him for cameras, they'd never touch that particular part of his anatomy, so he got away with it. And he'd have the lens in another pocket. So the body of the camera would be down the front of his wife fronts. Uh, and, you know, he shouldn't have come in and taken those pictures, but thank goodness he did. I mean, I'm so glad he broke the rules. It just shows that the rules are there to be broken. And he's, he's a wonderful demonstration of that. And over here we have some of the album covers, the classic Friars Aylesbury 
album covers, Blondie, The Cramps, Hawkwind, The MC5, The Clash, Iggy Pop, The Idiot. Wonderful, wonderful memories of that period. Again, some wonderful photographs here by Mark Jordan, uh, Steve Hackett there, um, Psychedelic Furs, Motorhead, uh, Mark Kelly from Marillion. Uh, and again, another compilation here with um, Clash, Ian Jury. Uh, this is Stackridge playing Phase 3. Again, a great uh, set of photographs with uh, Mutter Slater fronting the band. And this display here is actually the box set of the master tape that they did for the band, sorry, for the um, album The Man in the Bowler Hat, uh, produced by George Martin. And this is George Martin's actual notes from the studio. George Martin, of course, produced all the Beatles, um, classic Beatles work. And we're very grateful to Stackridge for having this. It's been amazing, actually, this exhibition, because throughout the four months that it's been on, We've organically grown it every single week. There's been additional stuff coming in. So people who came at the beginning would come again and they'd see a lot of stuff they hadn't seen before. And one little gem that people don't know is there is actually the other side of this door, which is again Mark Jordan Gallery, another Mark Jordan Gallery. And uh, if we come through here, um, we can, I don't know if you can see here, but we, uh, this is another... This is the old, the old stairs to the museum, and again we have another beautiful selection of uh, photographs from Fairport Convention. The specials, I mean, who would ever know that was the specials? You would never even recognise them. That was the first time they played in 1978, supporting The Clash. And here we have um, Robert Smith from The Cure, again, very early photograph. He doesn't look anything like that now. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Psychedelic furs, again. This is Ian Gillen, you know, and you can't actually see Ian Gillen because they had so much smoke because it was all that heavy metal period where it was all to do with smoke and lights and things. But he's in there somewhere <laughs> in that sort of white haze is Ian Gillen. That's his band behind him. That's a really special photograph. Um, Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel with Jim Cregan. Jim Cregan played in Blossom Toes in the early days and then went on to play with Rod Stewart for years and years and years. It's a lovely picture. This is uh, Annie Haslam of uh, Renaissance. Great one of uh, Pete Overend Watts from Mott, Mott the Hoople. Uh, again, you um, two and Phil Collins. And I don't know, if Richard, if you'd like to have a look around here, but this is the old museum. It's all the permanent part, so this is the old wall. And I did say to David Erskine, maybe we could stick a few posters over there, but he didn't think that was so appropriate. <laughs> um, so, <coughs> Sting there from the police. Wonderful picture of Lemmy from Motorhead, Frankie Miller, and uh, Ian Jerry and the Blockheads. I don't know if you can see that at all. And over here we have this wonderful Ian Jerry photograph, Andy Ferrer the Low, and Dave Greenslade. So, this is a little area that not many people have seen and even know it's here, but um, again, it's a, it's a lovely little extra. Uh, exhibition piece of these wonderful photographs. Sue has very kindly put all this together, which is actually files of each, each of the handouts from every gig. Um, you can see there, so that people, they're actually uh, photocopies, but they look just like the originals. So there you are, that's the Friars exhibition that took place in 2014 at the Buckinghamshire County Museum. Uh, we would love to have a permanent home for this exhibition, but hopefully one day we can do it again. Uh, we'll have to see, but uh, thank you to everybody who came and I hope you enjoy this, this record of the exhibition.